Let's talk about some freaking movies, I guess. Yep. There were some good ones and some yeah, okay ones in 2019. I'm just going to talk about six, it looks like, movies that I saw and enjoyed. And if they're not on the list, then I didn't see them. So first up here is Battle Angel Alita. I like this one. Um, yeah, I like to see live action anime done well. And this was done pretty well, I think. I really like Rosa Salazar as uh, Alita. I like the eyes. I don't give a fuck what anyone says. I liked it. Um, it's a little simplistic, I guess. I wasn't crazy about the villain, the big buff dude. I don't even remember what his name is now. I always thought his acting was like a little off in it. And then I discovered later that that's the actor who played Warsh Rorschach in Watchmen. And he's in some other stuff too. And he's a good actor and everything, but he always brings some weird, like, uh, I don't know, some weird stuff to his acting. And he's just kind of weird in this movie too. He's, he's, he's fine, but that big buff dude is not the best villain to have. I don't know. I, I kind of hope they do an, a sequel to show some cooler characters, some stuff. Uh... Edward Norton was at the end. He really looked like um, the guy, James Cameron, at the end of this movie. <laughs> he totally looked like James Cameron. But yeah, I don't know. I liked her metal arms and all that shit. It was done really well. I thought the graphics, all, like, look at that right there. That's, that's awesome. And uh, I really like uh, Christoph Waltz, too. Yeah, I don't know. It's not like this is no speed racer. I mean, it's really cool. It approaches that level of coolness um it has shades of that level like yeah that shit that's really cool um speed racer though 2008 if you haven't seen it the wachowski brothers that's still the best anime turned movie in my opinion but this one's not bad too all right moving on what's next here oh yes end game uh avengers end game Oh, the hype. Oh, the hype was so big. <laughs> I remember even tweeting about this after Infinity War came out, and I was like, savor this moment in our lives when it's between Infinity War and Endgame, and we don't know how Endgame's going to be, but it's going to be awesome, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, after Infinity War and stuff like Winter Soldier and Civil War, I was like so hyped on the Russo brothers, Russos as directors. Amazing. Um, and I don't know, Endgame though, meh, not as good as Infinity War, easily, in my opinion. Infinity War is incredible, but Endgame, there's just too much about it that was just kind of like, I mean, just look at the trailer too, it's just somber, dour. In my opinion, Endgame felt the most, uh, sounds like a diss, but it, it felt kind of like a DC movie, like just really dark and dour and overlong. Uh, oh, and I really hated how they killed Thanos immediately, and then it was Thonos, <laughs> the fake Thanos, uh, that was dumb, um, a lot of stuff was, yeah, and the Hulk, I, I didn't like how they did the Hulk, that was a big thing for me, because um, in Infinity War, the banner slash Hulk impotence <laughs> was such a plot thread, but then they just glossed right over it, um, in Endgame, and he's just like a, a douchebag in Endgame. <laughs> and like, eh, yeah, so, yeah, Infinity War was incredible. This one was just kind of meh to me. That's my opinion. Which is weird, because, man, I was the biggest Marvel shill. Honestly, this wasn't as bad as Game of Thrones in terms of disappointment, but it felt kind of similar f for me. Yeah, in my opinion, Infinity War is, like, way better movie. All the other Russo Marvel movies are far superior to Avengers, including Civil War. I don't know why people have cooled on that movie or whatever. Civil War is a freaking masterpiece. Anyways, next up, what we got? Oh yeah, speaking of uh, Marvel. Hey, what's up, little Tommy? Yeah, yeah, this one. Uh, far From Home. Not a lot to say about this one. It's pretty good, Spider-Man. Um, uh, some people have complained that like now he's just like Iron Man light. And he's got too much, too fast, too much gear. Like, he should be the poor kid, whatever, still. He shouldn't be flying around in jets and stuff. And I understand that. But also, at the same time, some of my favorite parts of this movie was he, when he was working on his suit in the jet and kind of being like a little young Tony Stark. 
So it's weird. I'm like split on it a little bit. Uh, I like, <laughs> I like it. Oh man, I never thought that joke was funny. Like when he gets punched in the dick, but then just talking over it in the trailer. It's, it's, yeah, it's alright. That's pretty funny. It's just a little dick humor. Oh yeah, Jake Gyllenhaal. Pretty, pretty freaking good in this movie. He's always good, I think, in a lot of movies. Um, go watch Everest, by the way. I really like that movie. Anytime I can talk about Everest, I'll talk about Everest and Jake Gyllenhaal is in Everest. And that's a good movie. It came out like freaking five years ago or something, but <laughs> check it out. Yeah, Far From Home, it's all right. We'll see how what the MCU goes in the future. I was the hugest MCU fanboy for a while. Um, Endgame, End, <laughs> Endgame kind of let me down, though, just a little bit. So I'm anxious to see where they're going to go. Anyways, let's keep going. Oh, yeah. Oh, baby. Once upon a time in Hollywood. This is such an interesting movie. Like it's kind of like Fight Club or something. The first time I saw, hey, what's up, Brad Pitt? Speaking of Fight Club, uh, first time I saw Fight Club, I was like, did I like that? I don't even know. Um, kind of same deal with this. I love Quentin QT. I love like all of his movies. He's probably my favorite artistic auteur ever. When I think about originality and style. Quentin Tarantino is basically unmatched. Um, absolutely. So a lot riding on this movie. This movie is a little bit more subdued. A lot going on. Um, but yeah, ultimately I decided, hell yeah, I fucking love this movie. And the more you watch it, there's so much going on. So many plot lines and threads and character interactions and character emotions. Subtle things and outrageous things. Um, part of it is just enjoying the 1960 atmosphere. Part of it is enjoying the Hollywood atmosphere and how actors work and the behind the scenes. And then part of it is just enjoying watching Leonardo DiCaprio freak out. Oh my God, that scene is the best scene. <laughs> oh, and then at the end, it turns into like a crazy fucking over the top gore fest, like insane. And honestly, the first time I saw that ending, I was like, whoa, uh, holy shit. Uh, I don't know how I feel about that. But uh, it's just crazy, over the top, revisionist history shit. So whatever, it's fucking, it's a movie, go with it, have fun. And just, yeah, everything else is amazing. It's a good movie, really good movie. One of my faves of the year. And what's up next? Good old, oh yeah, also Margaret Qualley in that in uh once upon a time in hollywood she's really good in uh that and death stranding it's amazing the her different performances in both those um so yeah shout out to margaret Qualley. she's really good actor actoress <laughs> uh oh yeah joker joke hair um yeah I like this movie quite a bit, you know, so much controversy around it, but it's just, I think, a really good movie. Um, yeah, it's Scorsese-ish, um, or highly inspired. Um, not even ish, just Scorsese highly inspired. But I really like this take, and I really like that it's colorful and has the comic book movie feel. I mean, not really, but just, in my opinion, it's pretty much like a well-done Scorsese uh, impression but also with that colorful, slightly colorfulness, like right there, of comic style, comic book style. So, I mean, I freaking love Scorsese. I, I do. I love all of his movies. But even this one offers something a little bit extra. So to me, a fan of colorful, over-the-top shit, it's like Scorsese, but, um, but with just, like I said, that comic style and man yeah just the colors in this movie are so good like the cinematography is amazing Joaquin Phoenix is amazing this might this or Once Upon a Time in Hollywood are my favorite movie of 2019 like honestly like there's so much going on I don't know it's just entertaining movie that's that's all I want you know <laughs> and it entertains me so there you go the joke hair I like the joke hair and what we got here for the last oh yeah Oh, talk about divisive and shit. Um, I'll just keep this one short. I like this one. <laughs> I don't know. I'm cooling on hating, being super critical about Star Wars shit. It's just like, Star Wars is like the fucking basic serial of, like, entertainment fiction, you know? It's like, you got your Captain Crunch, and then you got Captain Harlock, you know? <laughs> like, one of them is... Like, they're both dear <laughs> to certain nerds, 
but one of them is just kind of a basic template of what fun and action should be, which is what I think Star Wars is. It's like more a basic template of just fun and action and stuff. It's not like Game of Thrones or Marvel, even Marvel, where it's way more meticulously thought out. There's, there's like decades approaching centuries of history about the characters and the lore and all that stuff. I mean, Star Wars has deep lore, um, but yeah, the point that I think I'm making is just that Star Wars is a little bit more basic, I think, in terms of the spectrum of deep stuff that needs to be held up. Like, these, it's just, it's just a colorful whatever movie, and like, yeah, I enjoyed it. It's overstuffed, it's, um briskly extremely paced like you know there's a million things happening every minute but i'd rather a movie be like that than boring so to me this one's paced this one, <laughs> kind of like anime or something you know it's very, it's pretty over the top and i'm cool with that so yeah i enjoyed star wars episode nine and retroactively it made me kind of enjoy all the sequels like whatever man i know it's probably blasphemy to say but they're fine. <laughs> They're still kind of more entertaining than the prequels, man. I tried to watch those again recently, the prequels. And I like the dorky lore and stuff of it all, the prequels. But uh, those movies are just so wooden and stale. At least these new ones are fucking crazy. Even if they elicit emotions of rage, at least they're eliciting emotions. <laughs> all right, then. I think that's all I got to say about all this shit. Thanks for uh, watching this. Those are some good-ass movies in 2019. Honestly, between all the movies... Um, shit, I should have... Okay, whatever. Between all the movies, um, I actually feel like stuff like series is like um, Watchmen and Mandalorian kind of stole the show in 2019 um but yeah these are some decent movies so, so okay thanks for watching bye bye